former Cypress Semiconductor CEO. It's great to have you here, TJ. Looking forward to talking to you about all this news in the chip space. First, from your perspective, why are shipments of chips so globally constrained right now? Well, <laughs> now that I'm a retired CEO, <clears throat> I can say the truth, and that is, all problems like that are because of management screw-ups. It's real simple. <laughs> obviously, obviously, you if you manage things right and had systems in place, it wouldn't happen. And and that the, the industry is not there yet. And this correction, this uh, swift kick, uh, is going to cause them to improve things, and and this will get a lot better in the future. Anyone in particular you're referencing when you point to mismanagement? Well, okay, let me not be so strong in mismanagement, but yes, I will point my finger and, and tell you that the, the car companies caused this. And all you have to do is, you know, be a chip CEO, which I was for a bunch of years. Uh, I'll give you one example how we were treated. I got a call from Japan, just merged with a company up to my eyeballs, not getting enough sleep. You have a problem we need to talk to you about in Tokyo tomorrow morning. Uh, I got a, you know, I got a merger. We don't care. Show up. This will count <laughs> on your record. So you get in the airplane, you fly all night long, you get out in August with your suit stick into your back, and you go into a boardroom and get the, the hell beat out of you by a bunch of Japanese directors. They like to be deeply involved. Okay, that's not just a Japanese story. That's a story about the auto industry. And they treat chips the way they treat tires, right? Oh, rubber. How much does it cost per pound? Yeah, we want a lot of tires. We don't want tires at all. You hold the tires until we need them. And the problem is chips are one of the most complicated things on the face of the earth. A typical video game, if you had a blueprint, literal, they don't do them anymore, but literal blueprint of a chip be a thousand times more complex than the blueprint for the Empire State Building. And you don't just turn them on and turn them off. And it takes real smart, real well-run companies even to make them. So when COVID-19 smacks the system and everybody gets scared and they're playing the who's got the inventory game when the music stops, they, they push it back on the mm -hmm. go for chip companies and the chip companies say, okay, yes, boss, we'll have layoffs, we'll, we'll stop making the stuff. Problem is a chip takes 60 to 120 days of wafer to make. 60 to 120 days from the time the round piece of silicon goes into a robotized fab and gets carried automatically through the line until it comes out. Then it goes around the world, maybe only once if you're lucky, for another two weeks to get turned into a chip, tested, and shipped. And there's no responding faster than that. It, and that's it. So when they wait and they get hit and they got hit with surprise demand, there's nothing that can get done. So, so it sounds, TJ, like uh, you're not suggesting the government is, is to blame. But uh, the reason I bring that up is can they be part of the solution? How quickly... Can what was discussed today uh, help to give a solution to, to make the U.S. Uh, a not face a shortage as it does now, but also be more dependent, self-dependent going forward? Well, let me answer by analogy. Start out with, uh, let's suppose there's a shortage of masks today. Would you just trust Joe Biden to do a study and figure out the supply chain for masks and make masks better and more efficiently and give us some government money to get it done? Or would you start go on an Amazon to find a mask? And the answer is, of course not. The government can't do stuff. This is, as I said, one of the most complex industries in the world. And it, it suffers from meddling from the government. Even meddling, throwing money at, at them, distorts the industry and messes stuff up. They're smart guys. Uh, they're, they're going to figure it out. The auto guys are going to learn. They have to treat chips with more respect. They have to by the way, Toyota did a good job. If you notice, Toyota was one of the companies that didn't announce shutdowns. And what they did is they stockpiled two to six weeks worth of chips, which is anti-Japan thinking. Having inventory is not okay. But, but when the cycle time to make stuff is so very long, you've got to do that. That's prudent management. That kind of stuff will happen. They'll debate internally. You'll never hear it. Who pays for the inventory? And all the government can do by politicizing the thing and having a Democratic-Republican argument whose fault it is is waste time and make people think they're doing something that matters. They can't. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.